Okay, I'm having fun with the uh, camera today. All right, so our f video here is supposed to be about how to use a mirror to construct uh, centers of triangles. And I've made another video about this that kind of goes over generically basic constructions with a mirror, but this one I'm going to update for 2014. I'm going to use the actual worksheet that you were given in class. The tricky part about this is you don't have one of these here fancy mirror tools to use at home. You'll have to watch this video at home and try to figure out how it works. Um, but, oh wait, wrong way. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try to make a really good video so that when you have to do this on the test, you know what you're doing. All right, so if you've watched the other video, this might be a lot of repeat, but hopefully the audio is better on this one, and hopefully, you know, this looks a little more like what you're trying to do in class with the actual video. Um, nothing's wrong with that other video other than the audio is bad and it's a different worksheet, but all the same content is there. Okay, so there's this mirror tool, and you got to figure out how to use it. It is a valid construction tool, just like Compass and Straight Edge, but this makes things a lot uh, faster. Some things are a lot faster. Some things are a little harder, uh, but we'll see which is which. It's all based on the idea that when you when you hold it up to the paper like this, you can see through it and you can see what's reflected. So I don't know right here how well you can see this. I'll use the mouse maybe to point what I'm pointing at. In the picture, I can see this little piece of this triangle here. It's reflected from this part of this triangle here. So point B in the reflection is back there. If I wanted to locate that point on the paper, if I'm careful enough, I can hold my pencil back here and I can still see through. So hopefully you can still, yeah, you can still see the pencil there. I can put it down to the paper and I can draw things. So I could locate where that point B is supposed to be across this reflection. That particular one I just drew there was not really meaning anything, but that's basically what this thing is for. Okay, so the first thing I'm supposed to do is um, do the perpendicular bisectors of each segment. Perpendicular bisectors are pretty easy with this thing. So let's do segment BC first. So what I do is I'm looking at that reflection of point B and I move this thing around until B lands right on C. B, when point B land, the point B that I'm looking at here through the mirror, mirror lands right on top of point C, then I know to just do this. And that is the perpendicular bisector of that side. Isn't that, whoa, can you see it? Isn't that pretty? Now, something I forgot to tell you. When you're using this, you can't just use this any old way. You gotta know what you're, you're doing. You gotta use the side that they prescribe when they built this thing. Okay, so on one edge of the middle main part of the mirror right here, there's a little beveled cut edge where I put my finger right here. That doesn't even happen on the other side. The other side is just a simple piece of plastic. But lo and behold, on this side we have high-tech cuts going on. So there's a little cut right here. And when you hold it, you can feel one side's totally smooth. The other side's got this little cut on it. You're supposed to look in the side with the cut and put the cut on the bottom. So the cut is right here. Whenever you draw along the edge of the bottom, like, like a straight edge, you use the cut part. So I can feel the cut here on this side and I'm looking in this side too. So when I did that little lineup with B on top of C, that's how I did it. I made sure the cut was on that side. If you do it the other way, you're gonna be off by half of a thickness of a mirror. So you gotta do it this way so that it's more accurate. All right, let me do two more of these. I gotta get point C, I just move this around just so it's like I can see this point C in its reflection lining up on point A back in there. And when it lines up, I don't have to do anything other than that. So that's the perpendicular bisector of side AC. I really don't have to do any more to find this circumcenter. I know it has to be this point right here. Uh, if I really wanted to, I could locate the perpendicular bisector of A, B, get this point B line up on A, and guess what? It actually does go right through there. So there's all three of those. Uh, the next one here is I'm supposed to do the medians. Uh, median. Actually, we do the same kind of thing with the uh, mirror that we did here. For medians, I gotta locate all these midpoints and then connect from midpoint to opposite corner. Well, to locate midpoint, I do exactly the same thing. I'm locating the perpendicular bisector, just like we would do if we were doing compass and straight edge, but I only need that much of it. There's a, there's a perpendicular bisector. I don't wanna extend this. I really just wanted to locate a midpoint there. Let's do all three of those first. Getting C to line up on A, 
And when it lines up, I mark midpoint, great. And then A to B, I line this up. A is on top of B now, so there's the midpoint. And then I'm just using my mirror as a straight edge. Connect B to the opposite midpoint. This is just now an expensive ruler. It's a little bit annoying to get it perfectly positioned. There's one median. This median goes to A. And this median goes to C. And hopefully they all line up. This is a little bit off, but that's not bad at all. So there's the three medians, and this thing is the centroid. All right, on the back, we have another construction to do. It's about angle bisectors. OK, angle bisectors I haven't done yet. Angle bisector, let's talk about uh, bisecting angle C here first. We know angle bisector is going to look something like this. So lo and behold, the mirror is, you know, you might estimate that we're starting out somewhere like this. And that would be right. Where we're going to, I can kind of hold this here. And I just turn this until I get this ray CB in the reflection to line up perfectly on top of CA. I don't know how well you can see that, but if I move it off, you can tell it's off. I move it right on there. Then I know I've got a perfect reflection here. CB has gone on top of CA, so I know that's where I can draw this thing. So there's the, there's the angle bisector of angle C. Angle B, sort of the same thing. Put the mirror on B, swivel it until this side of the triangle goes on top of this side of the triangle that's back behind the red curtain, so to speak. There's another angle bisector. The angle bisector of A, same thing. Get those to line up. And whammo. And good, they all ended up in the same place. So this would be the in center right here. And did I say that right? The in center? Yeah, it's in center. Here are some more tricky constructions. These are actually not in the other video. So this is one of the main reasons why I wanted to make this video for you today. Not just because I know you love listening to my voice talk about geometry constructions, but try to figure out this is equilateral. Well, if this is equilateral, this ought to be a line of symmetry. We ought to be able to reflect you know, one side of the triangle like this. If I was going to try to do this angle bisector or something, it should land right on that other one. This looks pretty good. If I make this as a, if I draw this line here, it appears that it's doing all this stuff correctly. It was doing that and it was doing that. And it was doing that, if you look at how all this stuff lines up. Right on that line, this point reflected perfectly back there. This side reflected over there. Life is good. If that much is true of this triangle, then I know that side is congruent to that side. I at least have some kind of isosceles triangle. Let's see if it's isosceles in another direction. By the way, I'm doing this Star Wars-y kind of perspective thing here because otherwise you wouldn't be able to see through the mirror very well. If we look straight down on it, look straight down you wouldn't be able to see the reflection so that's why sorry if you're seasick now but that's why when I'm holding this thing it might not look perfectly isosceles because we are again we're doing that Star Wars perspective kind of stuff all right so it's isosceles in that direction let's see if it's isosceles in another direction I'll try to reflect this side over on the other side and it appears like it does this for for my money this this to me appears to be isosceles this is working well again that looked like a good angle bisector that looked perpendicular. We cut this perfectly in half. That little piece was congruent to that little piece. I'm pretty sure that all three of these sides are going to be congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and say that's equilateral. If it's off by a couple of pixels, well, then I'm sorry. But I think I would take that as equilateral in my book. All right, this one we're supposed to construct and label the orthocenter. Oh, we haven't done orthocenters yet. Orthocenters are made from altitudes. And an altitude is the segment that goes through a corner of the triangle, but then runs perpendicular to the opposite side. Of all three of the, and, and there's going to be three of those, the th easiest one it looks like I can make first would be the one that goes from C that runs perpendicular to AB. So let's do that one first. Okay, so there's the cut side. Great. To make sure that I have a perpendicular here, can you see this? If I, I'm trying to make a perpendicular to, to line AB. So I put this on here so that this line is headed towards there and then once it goes into the reflection area it's right on top of where it was before that means it's perpendicular just like before we were doing the perpendicular bisectors so if i just slide that i know all these lines where i could possibly draw here these are all perpendicular to a b which is nice but i want to draw the one that goes through c so i keep moving this back and forth until it continues this path into the mirror 
but also is it right at the right place where it goes through C? It's probably more explanation than you needed. So that was my objective, to get a perpendicular here that goes through C. I need the same thing from B perpendicular to line AC. Well, if I try to get that to happen, B to AC, it looks like BC itself is perpendicular to AC. See this? I've got a line back in here. This is the reflection of AC in the mirror. And it's going the same direction as BC. I am going to claim then that this is actually a right angle. So the, if we look at these, in right triangles, orthocenters are kind of funky. Not only did this perpendicular go right through C, but I think the other ones are going to have to go through C also. For a perpendicular from point B down perpendicular to AC is going to go right down to C because that's perpendicular. Same thing with A. If I draw an A perpendicular down to BC, it's going to be right there. So all of these things actually intersect at C. So C is the orthocenter. Two more. Three, number three, use the given side as the base of an isosceles triangle. Oh, this is way easier than you probably think. If this is going to be an isosceles triangle, the vertex of that triangle has to be on the perpendicular bisector of EF. That was the perpendicular bisector theorem. Any point on the perpendicular bisector, and actually only points that are on the perpendicular bisector, can be equidistant from E and F. Perpendicular bisectors are a breeze with this thing. I just get E to line up on F and get myself a perpendicular bisector. Pick your favorite point on that thing. And now again, we're in expensive ruler mode. Just draw these. And we have a nice isosceles triangle that looks unfortunately equilateral, but uh, that's all there is to do on that one. This is supposed to be given as equilateral to construct. I have a whole bunch there. Sorry, isosceles triangle with a vertex angle of 120. OK, um, this is, these are all 60, of course, because they're equilateral. My favorite way to make a 120 degree angle in this picture is watch this. It's going to be something to do this in class. If I just extend this, now I've got a 120 degree angle right there. That angle is 120 degrees. I just need to make an isosceles triangle. Well, um, I don't know exactly where to draw this line over here, so that's going to be isosceles. Right now, if I connect these, it looks like it's going to be close, but I can't be sure. But if I were to reflect the side I drew here right on top of that and copy this point right over here. Now, how am I locating? This is kind of a new technique. I'm looking at my pencil point in the reflection, or sort of through it actually, land right on here as I have it on this side in real life. So I'm actually, my eyes are over here as I'm trying to wiggle this pencil around and land right, so it'll be the reflection at that point. And so I know that this segment is now the same length as this segment. So there we go, connect the dots. Um, you can do that slightly differently. I can show you in class, but I could have, uh, the only way to get that point, I could have looked from this side. This might have been easier. If you looked at this side, held that there, and just tried to reflect this point and drawn it with my pencil there, it would have given me the same exact location. Connect the dots and you're done. Okay, great. I will see you in class. The galaxy far, far away.